I went to bed. So I, I got done last night. My last email was 135. My yes. first text this morning was 545. And I feel like I slept 24 hours. So you tell wow. me how that feels. I feel good. I feel great. <laughs> you know, why don't we start off right with that right there? How do you do that? And I, I mean, I know a lot of agents like talk about work-life balance. I know a lot of people you know, may need more sleep than that. How do you overcome like that to be able to work so hard to always be top number one, no matter what? Because a lot of people claim that they can't keep up that kind of pace. So that's the first problem, right? So the biggest problem is when you go into it thinking you can't keep up that pace, you, you defeated yourself right there. So I go into every day say, no matter how today goes, I'm gonna get through every text, I'm gonna get through every email, I want to make sure every client is answered or satisfied at the end of the day. No matter what. No matter what happens during the day. An earthquake could happen. I could lose power. I could whatever. Whatever it is that happens that day, I need to make sure I, I know by the end of that day, I have everything complete and I can go to bed satisfied that I, I did a good day. I had a good day. Most people will go into the day and say, oh, my God, I'm so overwhelmed. I'm going to let all this frivolous stuff bother me. I'm going to let all this noise get in the way and stop me from getting through what I need to get through. The other thing is you can't allow the stuff that's non-income producing during the day be getting from doing what you need to do. New business is, is, is the best business. So new business and anything that's new that you're out there trying to get to gather client relationships, all that stuff should take precedence off of anything that's, that's, that's non-income producing during the day. And too many people get bogged down in that and they can't get out of their own way. They get stuck in a paper bag. And, so, that one, and that's one thing. And I actually just, I'm going to tell you this. I just started something recently that for me has been maybe the most mentally positive thing I've ever done in my life with my emails. And it's basically putting the emails into buckets, having an admin, put them in the buckets and answer what they can and cannot. So when I get done at night, instead of looking at 250, I have maybe six buckets, 30 in this bucket, 50 in this bucket, 70 in this bucket. And I know by what the buckets are labeled, which ones are most important. And it's just easy to knock them down, knock them down, knock them down. And it's been absolutely from my mindset, it's been fantastic. Just because it's easier to get through? I don't know if it's easier to get to or mentally it's not as, as, like when you look at 250 open, e like unopened emails, yeah. that can become daunting and draining, right? Just by looking at it. Just by when I go in my inbox, I'm drained. Yeah, before you even, you just kind of, we talked about it in the beginning. Oh, most people can't even get, you know, most people can't even get to the point where they, they want to do that much work where they can get past it. So it kind of feeds right into your point where when I have 250 emails, I, I like dreaded going back to my, my computer and getting started. Now, when I have five buckets of 40 emails each, that's not, that's more manageable because I know in one bucket, I can bang those out in a, in a half a second a piece. In one bucket, I know it's going to take time for me to look at. So I can compartmentalize how to get through them. And for me, it's been fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. I, again, it, put, it allows me to put importance on certain things and just get through the real important stuff. And then any of the stuff that can either wait until the last part of the night or can even go into the next day if it's something that's not client related. It's, it's just been absolutely great. And I'd be willing to share with anyone the way that I broke them down, but Oh God, it's just been such a good thing and, and really, really made my mindset on the email go from total negative to much more positive and, and much more productive. Yeah, no, definitely share that, that tip. So, I mean, it sounds like, and tell me if you agree that what percentage of your success would you say it's 80 or 90% or higher? It's strictly mindset. It's just like your ability to think about. 90, 90, 90, 90. Wow. I had a call with a, with a wealth creation coach last night, and this guy's trying to get me on as a client. He only deals with a certain, a certain sort of client. And, um, you know, when we left the call, he said, look, dude, he's like, you have the mindset that's going to make you great. It's not that you're, you don't have to be smarter. You don't have to be more polished. You don't have to be any of those things. It's the mindset that I can't teach people that you have. And I think that mindset is a, is a differentiator where, again, my cat could get run over by a car. 
I'm still going to move forward. I'm moving. You know what I mean? It's that mental mindset, that mental toughness to not let the outside world see how, like, you just got to keep all that in, keep moving, keep moving on, and keep keep wanting to be better and also wanting to learn. Like, I'm the one reaching out, like, this guy is trying to help me. Like, I know I'm not, I, I know I have so much more to learn and so much more potential, but it's the ability to see that and take that and, and take what you have now and, and put the two things together and try to be really great. So mindset for me is huge, huge. And, and I'm going to, I'm going to add, I don't want to get off on a tangent and, and I'm going to, I think, I think your brother, I think David, you talk about this all the time. When we talk about, when you come up and follow me, how I'm able to, if something goes wrong, make adjustments and changes. And I had about a, a half an hour call with the guy last week and I, and I call it the ability to pivot. And what I mean by the ability to pivot is the ability to take to be going straight, running straight ahead, and then on a dime pivot and go to the left or go to the right or spin or do whatever it takes. And I, I think that ability to pivot when challenges come up is something you need to gain. You need to understand what that really means and deep, deeply dive into that, like what I mean by that, the ability to pivot. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I think I heard David. I think David is trying to chime in. No, I, I was just gonna. I was just gonna add on. I think that where most people stuff goes wrong, they basically stop and kind of like willow in the pain of life and situations. Where Kyle, he just moves. He just goes on to the next thing, and you almost it's it's like you almost don't have time to stop and think about the negative stuff. You know, you you can't right. So you can't. You actually. You actually cannot, right? So you you can't, right? The negative stuff is going to take your mindset down. In addition to, right? So in addition to um, not allowing you to be productive. So it's it's a double negative, right? So it's going to make your it's going to make your psyche negative, and then it's also going to take your production productivity, and it's going to minimize that. So it's a double edged sword. So you know those things. That's important. I mean, that's something I think you know a lot of people get stuck in the weeds. You can't allow that to happen. Problems are going to happen, guys. In this business, you're going to have problems. I have problems every day. I want to blow my head off every day. <laughs> Guess what? I figure it out. <laughs> yeah, that makes two of us, Kyle. I do, too. And I often think about it when, when stuff gets hard. I think about you because we might have, like, 20 deals and 10 listings and everybody's calling. And, like, there's a, it seems sometimes like there's an issue on every deal. And I always go to my brother. Like, imagine Kyle's <laughs> dealing with, like, 100 listings right now or a hundred on the contract right now. So how do you, you, you're really good at nurturing and managing people, but how do you overcome personally that ability to do so? How do I what, overcome what? The, the ability to manage all of that inbound traffic, or I, I'm assuming you, you get issues from clients. Yeah, yeah no, all the, all, all guys, all day long. All but day you're long. also, it happens you're, because but you're you also, have to go into it with the mindset that, look, if you want to be great, you have to take what greatness brings with it. If it was easy, everyone would do it. If getting money was easy and getting, getting great and being great and getting to that level that you always wanted to be at was easy, everyone would be there. There's a reason everyone's not there. It's not easy. And with success comes problems, comes hurdles. And all that stuff, like you need to go in with the mindset that every day is going to be effed up. No matter what you do, every day is going to have problems. So now how do you solve them versus become a – so I call people, you're either going to be a problem solver or you're going to be a complicator. There's two sorts of people in this world. There's problem solvers and complicators. You need to be a problem solver. You can't be a complicator. If you want to be a complicator, you're in the wrong – you're, gonna, you're never going to get out of your own way. Right. And, and you have to go into it with that mindset. You have to take – as the balls come, come at you, you have to hit them and knock them down. The ball comes at you and knock them down. And you have to, once that, once that ball is knocked down, you have to move on to the next thing. So, for example, I go to a listing appointment, yeah. or I hear from a seller, I didn't get the listing. That's the last time I'm thinking about that for that day. I'm not thinking about that one more time that day. That's it. I'll think about that at night and say, why didn't I get it? What did I do incorrectly to not get this listing? If I'm not going to dwell on it. I'm just going to say, how can I be better and get the next one? Right. Absolutely. I guess my question was more in the lines of, so how do you manage all that chaos of the current business coming in? Cause you feel 
<laughs> and at the same time, your massive focus on getting new business and new deals. <laughs> right. So my existing stuff. So anything that I can pass off to my admin staff that has to do with anything that's already in in pending status or active that's not life and death. I pass, I pass it off. I, I, I basically pass it off to them. Anything that's new business that needs me to touch it, handhold it, take care of it, that's stuff that I, that I'll handle. So I, I basically look at, I look at importance and income generation. So anything that's going to be income generating, that's going to get my main focus. Anything that's not income generating, that's going to be secondary. And by doing that, it allows you to focus on the things that are important to build your pipeline versus yeah. a, if you focus on all the stuff that's pending, you'll never build your pipeline because you'll never be, you're, you'll always be behind the eight ball. If you're able to focus on all that, all the new stuff, okay, maybe a couple of things in your pipeline might, you might have to give a little bit more attention if the admins can't handle it. But for the most part, you can talk your way out of anything. Yeah. And, and it's very challenging to teach and train that without actually hanging around and being around you. But I'm able to pick up on your ability really, really well. What you do is, you're able to evaluate what's important, what's priority, what's emergency, and kind of handle that problem really fast or pass it on and move on to income producing activities. Where I think in most people's cases that I see, especially newer agents starting out, they get a deal and now the clients complain about pictures or this or that, and they're so focused on that deal and they get overwhelmed and then that one deal like basically sucks them in and they end up having this roller coaster because every time they get a deal or two, they're focusing on servicing the deals, but you don't do that at that, all. No, I wouldn't say that. That deal, I don't allow the deal to, to manage me. I manage the deal. So right. if I get pictures and the client's not happy, this is what I say. No problem. All good. My job is to make you happy. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to get photographer B. He's going to be out there tomorrow. We're going to get this started the way that you want it, and everyone's going to be happy. We're going to sell this property for you. Oh, okay, no problem. Am I going to argue with them because they don't like the pictures? No. No, that's a waste of time. They don't like them. I'll get another guy out there. We'll get new pictures. We'll move on. They don't like this. I'm gonna, I mean, you gotta. You have to look at things, the path of least resistance. What's the easiest, fastest, quickest way to problem solve and move on to the next thing? And in your case, you have to because of such such enormous va like uh, volume. You just basically have to move on to the next thing. You're like, what's the quick, quickest solution? And we're off and running, right? Absolutely. And I don't have time to think of, like, I can't explain how many phone calls and text messages I get in a day. It, it really is. It really is mind boggling. Can you guess that many? Cause I, I get, I get overwhelmed just, just hanging around with you, having your phone going off 24 seven. Guess they made how many calls and texts you get a day. I would say in a, in a day, in an hour, I would say I get anywhere from 20 to 30 phone calls and 50 to 100 text messages per hour. And that starts at seven and goes till nine. <laughs> wow. So for people or other agents that say, oh, I'm too busy or I can't take on this client and you're on this call and you're listening, you could pretty much hear the example of like, you're, you're capable of doing a lot more than you think. Like in Kyle's, in Kyle's absolutely. every single day. Absolutely. I mean, <clears throat> absolutely. I mean, I think the mindset thing, we get back to the mindset and we get back to the ability to understand that limitations. Yo, I'm no better than you. I'm not better than anyone on this call, anyone in any of these offices. I'm not better than any. Like, I'm not, I'm not like, I put my pants the same way you put your pants on. I do everything the same way. My family wasn't in real estate. None of that, dude. Like, I just have a different mindset. <clears throat> and, and some would say it's somewhat insane. It's a little insane, but it works for me. It's right. the mindset that works for me. I mean, that mindset got you to be number one in all of Keller Williams. And you continue to do that. We, we have leaderboards that come out every month. You continue to do that each and every single month. How heavy is the pressure on being number one or being the best? Or do you not focus or pay attention on that? Or do you think about that all the time? I think about it every day. Probably every. the most pressure. I, <laughs> I mean, without getting too into my <clears> – <throat> into my mind and my brain and my thought process. Oh, we that's something I can't ex so that, 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 that's, that's honestly, that's honestly something I can't explain to you. Um, the pressure of that is so strong that that's a whole nother level of pressure. And, and, and you guys, so like 
the leaderboard, right? So whatever, it's it's cool to get on there, right? So everyone wants to get on that thing, and and that's cool in the New England and whatever, and that that's great, and that's I appreciate that, and I'm thankful, I'm grateful. But there's a lot of folks out there that can't wait to see the day when my name's not all plastered all over that thing, and yeah. that and that basically is that's another driver that tell that tells me I need to be great, so I don't prove everyone right that oh it's not sustainable well it's been sustainable for three years four years and until i decide i don't want it to be sustainable yeah i'm gonna stay on that i'm gonna stay there but the pressure that comes with that if i have one slip up oh there he goes he's falling off oh can't do it oh it's unsustainable it was you know whatever so you know the when, when everyone knows who's there and who you are the really, really lot of pressure to stay there. And it's, it's my mindset that's got to keep me grounded and keep me humble to keep doing it. Because once you get complacent, you're going to move off. And that's a really tough pill to swallow. When you've been up there for so long, if, if you move down, it's a, for me, that's really, that would be really hard. Yeah. And just so some of the people listening to this call can duplicate some of that mindset, why is that so important to you to be the best or be number one or be on that leaderboard? How can people self-induce that kind of drive? So I am a firm believer. If you're going to do something, be the absolute best you can. If you in have any- a passion for something, in anything, whether I want to, whether I want to scoop ice cream, I want to be the best ice cream scooper in the <laughs> East Coast. I would come get ice cream for you all day. Right. So I just, so here's, here's where I'm going with that. So if you have the, if you, if you want to do something, you're going to be all in, you yeah. should want to be the absolute best in that business. And you should see, you should see every single person in that business as a competitor. And that you basically want to beat every single person in your business. That does not mean you're mean to them. That does not mean you're rude to people. That just means that you keep in mind that this is, this is ultimately a game and you're playing against all these other participants and you want to be the winner. Now, when you take that mentality and you add on a passion for what you're doing, I like real estate. I love real estate and I love helping people. Yeah. That's when it can get scary. Now, if I went and was, a, so I used to be a shoe salesman. I worked at a company called journeys. Yeah. And I made it when I was 18, I made it to the top. I was the top shoe sock ratio guy in the entire East Coast at 18 years old. Had no idea what the hell I was doing. Didn't like shoes, so I was like, this sucks. But what did it show me? It showed me that I like to sell. It showed me that I could do it, right? I had the personality for it, and I like to help people. So if I took that and I found a business that I actually liked, that's when you can be great. you got to find that passion, though. Like, I can't tell you what you love to do. Some people get in real estate for the wrong reasons. They want easy money. They want to make quick money. It's not about money. I don't care about money. It's not about money. It doesn't matter. The money comes. Money's irrelevant. Once you get money, it's whatever. I can make money on money on money. I mean, that's not a big deal. You know, I, but to grind to get to money, hell yeah, I'm all about that. You got to grind and get your money up and do whatever it takes and do stuff you don't like to get to that point. But once you get to that point, it's not about money anymore. If you're doing it for money, you're going to phase out. It's not about money. I don't even look at checks. It's not about money. Irrelevant. Totally yeah. irrelevant. It's about being great and wanting to be better. And I think every, and the, and the, and the, on my end, like every single day I say, how can I make this thing better? How can I make this machine better? What am I doing wrong? What new programs are out there? What is coming up on the horizon? What do I need to do to be ahead of the curve, to stay on the top and be better? And I ask myself that every single day and every day I try to figure out what that is. And it's all about game planning. It's all about strategy. And it's all about figuring out what you what works for you. Absolutely. We have a good amount of people on the call. So I'm going to start Q&A a little bit earlier because five minutes probably not going to be enough. I muted you. If there was some background noise, just unmute yourself and ask your question. Any question you have to Kyle, he'll do his best to answer it. So we'll take it away. I'm going to, I'm going to call on Nick because he's always the one to ask the question first. So go ahead. We'll just get you right out of the way, Nick. And you always got the good questions. I just unmuted you. Hey, what's going on, Kyle? Um, it's actually, hey, this week's tough, tougher questions. Uh, the biggest thing that I've been dealing with this, um, this week is staying focused on a niche and one thing. 
bigger pockets is kind of the shiny thing out there because I really want to get into personal, uh, you know, uh, properties myself. So at what point would you recommend an agent to start going down that other path of personal, uh, acquiring personal properties? Because, um, you know, I'm not established as, as, as an agent yet when it comes to selling and, and buying and helping people out. You're asking me, when should you start buying property? Yes. I mean, being a newer agent, not yes, established. Yeah, 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 yes, yesterday, yesterday, as soon as you possibly can. And no, no, I'm not even being facetious. And look at how I think about property investing, right? I get a three family, okay? I buy it for two hundred thousand. We we'll use quick math. I buy it for two hundred thousand. My mortgage is, is eighteen hundred. I get seven hundred a floor. That's twenty one hundred, right? I may be, I may pocket a hundred dollars a month. Okay, fine. But during that entire period, they're paying my equity down. So in thirty years, I am sitting on two hundred thousand plus whatever the appreciation plus whatever cash flow I have. That is the best asset you could ever have in the universe, right? So the more of those assets that you can get as you're younger. When 20, 30 years comes around, your cash flowing is fantastic. Your appreciation could be there. Your equity position is fantastic. You're in a whole nother level of wealth creation and wealth and generational wealth. I don't know if you have kids. I don't know if you have siblings. I don't know if you have parents. But if you want to build a legacy, start now. Like, get out there and do it now. Like, you're going to be the per Like, bigger pockets is the biggest problem, to be quite honest. Too many people, I call them stat, stat sheet superheroes. They're really great at doing the spreadsheets and the stat sheets and the bigger pockets, but they never owned a property in their life. I never read a book. I never read, I never did a spreadsheet. I just go out and, and, and buy. And I understand that long term, there's going to be equity and there's going to be cash flow. And anything I can sign up for that is great. My follow up question is uh, because I don't have a lot of cash reserves to really buy myself. So to leverage. Uh, with these private investors and such, what is the resource they get in touch with those type of people? What's the best resource? So, so you need to find private lenders out there, and I can give you. There's a couple of national private lenders that some of my investors use. What these lenders do is these lenders will will lend you a certain amount of LTV, right? So they'll lend you 80, 90, 100 percent. You need to get a property that's somewhat depressed or distressed fix it up, get it so it cash flows, get it so it's a, a fully running property, and then you need to refinance. That's the only way to do this with minimal assets. So you need to buy something that's undervalued, get it up and running, go back to a commercial bank that doesn't have seasoning, refinance, get your money back and do it again. You should be able to do two or three a year like that. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Anybody else got any questions for Kyle? You could just unmute yourself and jump in. Uh, well, it looks like nobody's asking yet. So I just follow up. Um, so I was talking to an, uh, an investor and, and you might've seen it on the uh, coaching um, page Did you, uh, in regards to taking the quick, quick claim deed. That person can hold on to the mortgage. Yeah. And uh, and pretty much just renting it out and giving the mortgage to that other person while you hold the profits. Uh, is that something easy to get into, or what is that? So basically, this this investor uh, targets people that are in distressed property. We'll do a quick yeah. claim deed, and then you know he'll give them like say two thousand. They move out. He gets uh, a renter in there. Say the mortgage is twelve hundred. He rents out fifteen hundred. He takes twelve hundred. Gives them gives that 1200 to the person that's still holding onto that mortgage, even though they don't have the deal yeah. and then pocketing yeah. that other 300. What's the difference? Yeah, basically headaches to, to do that. No, nah, no headaches. That's a great, if you can find sellers to do that, do that all day long. I mean, basically that so that seller financing and making the, and, and getting assumable mortgages, those are the best three ways to get property and get property fast. Awesome. All day long, dude. If you can find, like, I have a guy right now that wants to sell me a building. And the building, 300000 out of his fucking mind. But he's willing to hold the whole thing. Like, he's willing to just give it to me for 300000 And then I just give him a note. So we're working on the terms of the note. He wants 30 years. I want to give him 40 years so I can get the minimum amount um, per month in, in a payment in PI and principal interest. And I just bought the house for nothing. And I'm cash flowing, 
and I'll pay it down in 40 years of a free house. Anytime you can do that, even if you pay a little more, who cares? Your cash on cash return is a zillion percent. You're not putting any money down. Okay. I just got to do more research on, on, on you know, taking or... or that takes stuff. years. It takes years to figure... It takes, takes time to figure that out. But guess what? Until right. you do it in, re, in real world, you'll never really understand it. You're going to have to grow. You're going to have to just get in the pool and jump. Okay. You're a smart kid, dude. You can figure it out without a doubt. Oh, yeah. No, absolutely. I, yeah. I just got to basically jump in the fire or a pool and, and learn. That's it. That's it. Absolutely. Anybody? I got one minute. Yeah, I got to jump into the question. Oh, Go ahead. One more question, and then this will be the with last. Every, with everything you got going on, Kyle, this is Omar. How are you man? able to find deals? What's up, man? How you doing? How are you able to Good. find deals like this? Are these deals coming to you from like just just having such a big, you know, exactly, uh, exactly. Network? So wholesalers, wholesalers come to me because they can't close. So like I got a deal yesterday. This guy brought to me two family for one twenty five. He can't buy it, so he brings it to me, and he's just like, yeah, I need to unload this thing. You want it? So like they bring them to me. So you got to find who's doing all, you got to figure out in your areas, who are those wholesalers, who's doing that stuff, get on those websites, figure out on Craigslist, who's moving this property, who's peddling it, and you got to get in with those guys. Those are okay. your biggest assets. Those that guys are your sense. biggest assets because they're basically getting the property for you so they can make a little spread on top, but who cares? Let them make money. The more times you let them make money, the more they're going to come to you first. They need to eat too. Right. Right, exactly. But and you need to find who those people are. Exactly. You can't worry about how much money they're making. It's irrelevant. Let them make as much. Who cares? I don't care. Around that one twenty-five, he made fifty grand. Not my problem. Good for him. Don't that, care. Don't care. That's what I always try to tell people, Kyle. It doesn't matter what the last guy made. As long as you're making money, it's all good, right? Doesn't matter. And too many people get so worked up on that. That's why they're not good business people. I don't care if you made one dollar or one hundred thousand dollars. If I like the deal, I'm gonna buy it. Doesn't yep. matter. Awesome. Don't Great be job. short sighted. Don't be short sighted. I gotta go. All right. Thank you, Kyle. Right. Thanks everybody for Thanks, hopping Kyle. on the call. We'll be back here every Friday. If you need information, go on the Facebook page. If you got questions, you could also post them there. Thank you guys. Have a great day and go close some deals. Thank you, guys. Enjoy. Thank Bye. you. All right, thanks.